for the 2017 recipient of the Glad's Stephen F. Kolzak Award, the youngest ever, Troy Savon. Troy Savon. Thank you so much, everyone. I've been a mess all night already, so I hope I can make it through this. Um, firstly, thank you so much, Justin and Carly. I am such a big fan of you guys. Emotion is like a perfect pop song, <laughs> as is Sorry. And um, yeah, just thank you so much. Thank you for doing that. Um, I would like to thank Glad, of course, firstly, um, for this enormous honor. Of all of the work that I am lucky enough to get to do, my work in the LGBTQ plus space is the work that I'm most passionate about. And um, so to be honored here tonight with this award is a privilege and encouragement beyond comprehension. Um, growing up on the literal opposite end of the world in Western Australia, I was a, a small, slightly like underdeveloped, closeted Jewish boy. And so I would like daydream a lot, understandably, I think. And, I would daydream of this admittedly very, very far-fetched life where I would come to LA, which to 12-year-old me was like this fantastical land where Michael Jackson lived and the arts came to thrive and most importantly, Australian football came to die. Um, I would dream of a world where it was possible for me to make my love of music my career. And silently and most often, I would dream of a world where I had confronted the monster that lived in the back of my mind. It was the one that I had run from my entire life. It was the monster that thought that that like V line that boys get into their board shorts was like really, really cool. <laughs> and it was the one that wanted to be very close friends with boys and for some reason, maybe even God forbid, kiss them. It was the monster <laughs> with which I planned to take that monster to my grave. I thought I was never ever gonna come out. And so I'm sure you can understand to be standing here right now accepting this award just a few years later in LA, gay as can be, world-renowned, like, <laughs> a world-renowned pop twink. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely surreal, so thank you so much, thank you. <laughs> but this award is so much larger than me. Um, this moment is about visibility and about representation. What and who we see in the media defines our perception of the world around us. And so to see ourselves in this picture of what is normal and what is acceptable and what is beautiful is absolutely vital. And in saying that, so much of the work that has contributed to our progress as a community um, is far less glamorous than the work that I'm being honored for tonight. About a year or two ago, I watched a documentary called How to Survive a Plague. I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. The doc is about um, the early years of the AIDS epidemic and the efforts of organizations like ACT UP and the Treatment Action Group. Within the characters in the doc, I saw myself, and I saw my friends, and I saw my colleagues, and I saw my boyfriend. And these kids were young, smart, active fighters. I saw that wit and that humor and that resilience that I've grown to love so much about my community. They were just like my friends and I. I know I'm being super humble. I'm like this smart and everything, just like me. But um, I saw myself in these characters and the difference was that these people were attending a friend's funeral on a weekly basis. This was in New York City, not even 40 years ago. They were fighting for medical treatment, they were fighting for visibility, and they were fighting for their lives. It was a life or death situation. In the documentary, you see these kids taking the ashes of their loved ones who had fallen victim to the AIDS epidemic and throwing them across the White House lawn just to be recognized. Needless to say, the documentary shook me to my core. It was this kind of activism and sacrifice that paved the way for all of us to be here tonight. And so while I'm so thankful and fortunate to have this award, I would like to share it with the warriors who made it possible but maybe didn't get one for themselves. So. This award is for Peter Staley, one of the featured activists in How to Survive a Plague. Peter was one of the driving forces behind ACT UP, the founder of the Treatment Action Group and a personal hero of mine. This is for Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, the godmothers of the Stonewall Riots who also founded a transgender rights group in the 1970s. 
this is for, you can keep going on the teleprompter. <laughs> this is for Bayard Rustin. Bayard was an openly gay civil rights leader who worked alongside Martin Luther King Jr. and was largely written out of history as a result of homophobia. This is for Gilbert Baker, the creator of the rainbow flag, a symbol of pride who we sadly lost yesterday. This is for the Edie Windsors and the James Baldwins and the Frank Kamenys of the world, and the list goes on. Though times and our needs may have changed, this ethos and spirit still persists in our community today. Even just yesterday at the Glad Rising Star Luncheon, I met C. Mandler. C is a non-binary trans student at the Bard College in upstate New York and runs a DIY music venue as a safe space for all. Also, my mum is here tonight. She's here from Australia. And my mum just had a hand in organizing the largest petition in Australian history with over 290,000 signatures. The petition was to abolish the gay panic as a defense on a murder charge. Basically, if you killed a guy in a state in Australia and then claimed that he made a pass at you, you could get your, your sentence downgraded from, mans from murder to manslaughter. And my mum just helped abolish that, like, last week. Thank you so much. And my dad has connected with myself and the community in ways that I could have never even imagined. Um, here he is. Uh, I wasn't even there. He just like went for a fun time. He just literally went for fun. <laughs> This is for every volunteer at an HIV clinic around the world. This is for the staff at LGBTQ plus homeless shelters around the world. Working all hours to get our homeless youth into safe spaces. It's for every GLAAD volunteer. It's for all of you in this room and for every parent who truly loves and supports their kid, whoever they are. That's where the real glory lies. All said, I know that we're in the most terrifying climate right now. 2016 was our deadliest year on record, with 27 transgender people killed in the US alone, the vast majority of victims being trans women of color. Eight transgender people have been murdered in hate crimes this year, all transgender women of color. Those are the only the stats that have been reported so far, and it's barely April. In Pulse nightclub in Orlando, we were the targets of the deadliest mass shooting in American history. 40% of homeless youth in this country identify as LGBTQ+. We have an administration in power eager to strip us of our most fundamental rights. Clearly, we have a very, very long way to go, but we must persist, as we always have. I'm lucky enough to play shows and see the young faces of our community when I do, and let me tell you, our future is so, so bright. Please, Don't let anyone strip you of your truth and your love because those are the foundations of who we are as a community. In a time where it might be tempting to retreat into the shadows, I ask you to please be louder. Keep holding hands, keep finding pride in your identity, keep standing up for those in our community who are most vulnerable, keep love in your heart and don't forget to share it with the world because that love is something to be so proud of and something that no one can ever take from us. Thank you so much again, Glad, for the incredible work you're doing. Thank you for this enormous honor. Thank you.